What is up, GOAT world? It is me, your boy JDZ, and I'm back at you again with another GOAT format video. Today is GOATmas, and you already know how I give it up. You already know how I give it up. So today we have another spicy deck to showcase on GOATmas. Today, we will be playing Exchange. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta give gifts and receive gifts. So you have to exchange on Christmas, okay, aka Goatmas. Uh, so today I'm gonna to be playing this deck and I tried to make this video like 75 times. 75 times I tried to make this video but the Grinch just wasn't having it, he was shutting me down. Oh my goodness, oh, shit, dude. Oh. All right, 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 all right. Okay, 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 let's do it. Let's do it, please. Oh my God, you guys have no idea. You guys have no clue what is going on in this video. The Dueling Book Ladder is a cursed wasteland. You know, Merry Goat Mist to you all out there. But real quick, I'll go over this deck and I've played a deck very similar to this on the channel before. You can go back and check it out. I think it was around last Christmas we played this deck. I wanted to keep it going. I wanted to retry it again because I got the three spirits. I got Ashura Priest, the Tsukiyomi, Spirit Reaper, the Spirit of Christmas Past, the Spirit of Christmas Present, and the Spirit of Christmas Yet to Come. Also, I wanted to play Exchange. Uh, Exchange is an interesting card in this format. I think it is borderline marginal playable. I think it's almost there. It's not quite good enough. Maybe there's a way you can do it. Maybe this isn't the best exchange mold, but I thought it was something that was interesting because if you do exchange a spirit monster and it does find its way to the field, it will come back to your hand. If you do exchange, send over one of these recruiter monsters, you do get those effects along with Nudoria. Um, it is, and it does pair well with my DD designator, mind crush, uh, trap death shoot also pairs well with those. Creature swap is going to pair well with all the spirits and all those recruiters. So I thought it would be something like that that could work, but I did realize that there are some hangups and you will see that in the replay that I will showcase to you guys. In the side deck, I just kind of kept it really basic, very simple, the side deck. Uh, I just have three Mobius, two Kaiku, two Smashers, three Books, uh, three Sakus, two Wides. I just wanted to go against the Warriors very well and I also wanted to have some stuff for the control. Uh, I probably should have incorporated a little bit more stuff for Chaos Turbo because that matchup is kind of difficult still even with the creature swaps, with the Noblemans, with the Zborg, with the BLS and all that stuff but I probably could have added some more stuff but I didn't want to put Minecon in there because I don't have more payoffs and I found myself nagging on Minecon a lot when I use this type of deck. But it does have some good things that it has going for it. Like I said, Recruiters I think are kind of slept on in this format. Uh, warriors are kind of all over the place and they have a pretty decent Warrior matchup uh, especially when you put the the creature swaps in there i think a sure priest is actually better than a lot of people think it is just because it can it can apply a lot of pressure and it can't be snatched stolen and things of that sort so i think the deck is okay maybe it's not the best deck but definitely enough to go ahead and give some christmas spear out to some duelists on the go format dueling ladder so like i said i tried to make this a live video but i wasn't able to so i do have some replays and we can go over those together talk about some strengths and weaknesses of a deck like this and also you know what i'm saying bring some seasons cheer to the go format rated dueling ladder okay but as we hop on over to replay town make Make sure you guys go ahead and like this video and subscribe to this channel and Merry Goatmas to you all. Here we are at the replay. Here we are at the replay and the first one I have is with a duelist named Yefim. Yefim doing their thing out here on the GOAT format radio ladder. Merry Goatmas to you Yefim. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and throw rock. We're gonna throw rock. We're gonna go paper, okay? Yefim was a rock, rock main and it was figured out quickly and i got the quick dub there and your fam it seems to be playing the reason engage strategy okay so cool i go ahead and spam and slam the tomato set mst toss it on over to your fam your fam hits me with a giant grenade so again as we do these replays i think it's beneficial and a lot of people have been reaching out to me telling me that it has been working they've been able to learn things from these videos they've been able to add tools to their toolbox their dueling toolbox and become better go format duelists so as always don't just pay attention to my deck and what i'm doing also pay attention to your fem's deck and what your fem is doing because there are also things that can be learned from each side as we all try to become better duelists as always don't just you know don't just vibe out try to pay attention to what's happening you see your fem comes out with a giant trunet on a single card with no like big big play i don't know i don't know about that they go ahead and set the fusilier to dual mobiles go for the monster gate play here and then a monster gate they're going to go ahead and hit the demog okay so demog boom sticks to the field check the spells they're probably going to grab back maybe maybe this dimension fusion is probably what i'm going for i'm going for this dimension fusion right away because you already got the demog in rotation and if something happens to the demog you'll automatically get the demog back and then you'll be ready to demog again so let's see what your fam does your fam hits that spell grabs the metamorphosis what are we doing here 
know what I'm saying? That's not how you reason the gate. And then they're going to spring the metamorphosis right now, which is a season's gift to me. Like as the, as the duel is on the other side of this, I'm like, okay, this is a gift. You're, you're, you're feeling the Christmas spirit. You're giving me a gift because that was completely unnecessary. You have this demock lined up against this Miss Tomato. Go ahead and send me 14. Okay. Send me the 14 and then I'll take it. And then my effect won't work because it's out of play. And you got this hard body demock just sitting on your side of the field. Very, very threatening demock. So I don't know about that. And they're going to bring out the Gatlin Dragon, which is just insane. Your fam is absolutely bugging. Oh my goodness. I wish I would have looked at his replay. Your fam is your fam is going crazy today. And then, of course, they get the super punish, hit triple heads, and then blows up the entire field. Just forced to set one pass. I think about it for a second. Just hit the hit the ring of destruction, bring out the spear reaper, and just smash in. So your fam didn't do that the correct way i would say there were some plays that they absolutely left on the table and they could have switched that up and just had much much better effects but anyway you know what i'm saying i just wanted to point that out to kind of showcase that about this strategy i think the reason reason to get strategy is really good it is kind of complex there are some things you have to know and you have to do things the right way still it's not just drag and go but you need to not do that okay moving on we got tune table contents going first bring out the tune cannon Okay, Toon Cannon, we're gonna go Reason here. I call eight, even though I got the D-Mock in hand, I didn't know that. I call eight, they land on six, and I'm like, cool. And then let's see if they, I probably would just splash this other Reason. You already got one hit, you might as well just keep swinging and see what you can do. And maybe you can even uh, hold, set yourself up for a D-Mock next turn, maybe, I'm not sure. But I go ahead and hit the pot, like the sacker that I am. I set my two traps, and then I think about it for a second, I go Sukiyomi. Sukiyomi kills, the sacred crane and then i play the smasher on the Jinzo exchange take over their reasoning they didn't play it so i now it's a part of my hand and now i know the hand is dimension fusion dark magic chaos tune cannon soldier all right so cool i go ahead and hit the dd designator go ahead and get rid of the dimension fusion you know that's all that's going to be out of the equation now and my sukiyomi comes back to the hand now they draw into air knight so i know the hand is tune cannon i know shining angel and i know dark magic chaos okay so then they go ahead, then I hit Mind Crush, go ahead and hit their Toon Cannon. So now I know if they put any monster on the field, is 100% going to be my Shining Angel, which is great because now I can get that thing recruited to my side of the field. I hit the Reasoning. They probably call four. Obviously, they're going to hit four because all my monsters are four. And then I go ahead and smash in with the new Doria, get the Shining Angel, Shining Angel attack on him with 14. Cool. And then we're just Seasons Greetings all the way down. Hark the Herald Angel. And then I smack on in with 14, the Tomato, the new Doria, the Shining Angel, all in harmony just beating down they really don't have anything no they didn't get to their skate goals and they just kind of break into oblivion so i think they left some plays on the table i think i had to get lucky but i just wanted to showcase hey that exchange play was pretty neat i was able to take over their reasoning one of their best plays and add it to my hand and then give them a card that they really had no value for i think that's some of the benefits of exchange i think another shell that exchange could be used for is maybe the um is maybe the like the rituals you add a ritual you send them a piece of the ritual and then you get their stuff back the issue with exchange is that it is a neg like you're gonna you're going down you're going down in card advantage and you're not really gaining a guaranteed plus back whereas if you are playing with rituals you summon sanju manju get a guy from your deck and then give it to your opponent and then that's kind of that's kind of value added right there also you're taking their best card away which is really cool all right so next deck we have is going to be because dual's name Loco lock on excuse yeah. me i can't read oh my goodness lock on 007 lock on 007 okay here we go lock on 007 i got the combo in hand i'm full combo right now my opponent seems to be playing like an earth aggro strategy which is really cool i go ahead and set two i go ahead and set two play the exchange right now give them a choice either shining angel or the assure priest I, I i the thing i've i've noticed about exchange like it's best when you play it as early as you can because especially if you go first play it as soon as you can because you'll be able to take their best possible card that they have at that time so i go ahead and take the ring of destruction there just so it can't be used against me i give them the assure priest i know they got the smashing ground here um and it's just going to be what it is so i go ahead and set the ring pass on over i hit him with the trap dust shoot send the injection fairy lily back because smashing plus injection just seems like violence and i don't want anything to do with that so i they go ahead and bring out the assure priest now i think this was also a mistake Mistake. maybe they didn't realize exactly how exchange works but when that sure priest hits the field and it's done in phase is called that thing is coming back to my hand so they just so i got i did it eventually get a plus off this thing it's just a little bit delayed as i go ahead and run through some shining angels they go ahead and keep attacking clean up two shining angels. i don't go to the dd warrior later i just want to kind of thin my deck a little bit get my sure priest back and we're going to vibe that way um i probably would have just sent i probably would have just sent the goblins in 
and just try to get this ring of destruction used maybe i don't know maybe that's not the, maybe that's not the way or maybe you just set the assured priest or something like that and that might have been even better but i bring down the assured priest again and just smash on in with 17 and then they go for reinforcement of the army bring out the dd assailant bring out the dd assailant and just set it onto the field i don't hate that because they know that this ring of destruction exists and they know that it's probably on the field and they don't want to get their guy ringed up so i hit the mst hit the knock bring out the assured priest again just that added pressure of just putting it on the field attack and bounce it to the hand there is some merit there in this metagame i think that's pretty dope and he goes for Rota number two, brings out the DD Warrior Lady this time, goes for the Linquent Duo. It's my BLS, hits the Shining Angel. I like to keep the Assure Priest just because that 1700 seems like it's doing some doing some work and clear up a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff that they put in defense position. Maybe they play rats or, or something to that effect. I will go ahead and think about it for a second. I play exchange again just to pass over the Assure Priest, take control of the Goblin Attack Force. Okay, bring out Goblin Attack Force, attack into what I thought was maybe a uh, another DD, uh, the, the, excuse me, the DD Warlay. Now I know because they wrote it for it. And now they'll have the decision to make if they're going to banish their own guy and they elect to do that. So cool. So now he has his sure priest. He has to set it because, like I said, if he were to summon that and try to do damage to me, I get that sure priest back. And then he has his two smashing grounds that can't even mess with the sure priest at all. So I'm sitting here. I got no one across out like not to play it. They got the MST, which is good for them because they know for 100% fact that that is ring of destruction, like without question. And they elect not to not to go for it or whatever, which is which is fine. I go for the Sinners of Serpent play, attack into the sure priest just to reveal it and then get it to come back to my hand again. So I'm just continuing to add this Assure Priest, getting some pluses from my exchange, kind of, over like a delayed like a delayed plus. I bring out the Missy Tomato, smack on in with 14. They allow that to go through. And then they have this Exile play. They MST the known Ring of Destruction now. And I think for a moment, my opponent's getting kind of low. I think for a second, I say, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and hit this Missy Tomato now, which is kind of not a great play because they could... He could have he could have gotten to I don't I don't think I know this smashing ground yet. So he could have gotten to uh, a Gigantes and another and a, and a guy. But he could have gotten to like a, a bulkier guy there and I would have been kinda in a hurt locker, but still. He sets the exile for us, just trying not to lose to this Assyria Priest, but he falls into this Nomen Across out. I go ahead and hit the Nomen Across out. Bring down the Assure Priest again. Probably should have summoned the Assure Priest first and then play Nomen Across out there still. Um, but I was fairly confident that there was no TT based on all the exchanges that I had done the prior turns before. Okay, so we're still kind of getting it in. Season's greeting to lock on 007. They go ahead and go first, play pot. They go ahead and spam and slam the DDS. Hit me with the dust shoe and the MST. I got the delinquent duo. I rip the duo, take the call, take the goblins. I set two. Um, and I summon the Sangin and I just pass there just to see if I can coerce my opponent into doing something, something swifty on me. I got the Mirror Force and the Sakuretsu armor down on the field. They go for the DD Warrior Lady. So this is the swifty play I was talking about. But my opponent's smart. You know, he didn't play right into the Mirror Force. Elected just to put the DD Ass to defense position and I hit him with the Sakuretsu armor. No big deal. Didn't play the delinquent duo. Just kind of hanging on to it, trying to get a supreme value for it. I don't hate that either. But maybe he could just rip it and he could have got this the Sure Priest maybe. I don't know but i go ahead and hit the uh hit the dd ass with the assure priest smack in for a thousand and then they get into the source of villain light so they bring out the injection fair lily and i'm like i can't take the the, the way the the meta of earth aggro okay you don't want to take a bunch of damage in bulk at any time if you can if you can prevent it i know a lot of times a lot of people say oh, i'm just using my life points as a resource i just i don't really care about life points it doesn't really matter life points really really matters when you're playing against this deck specifically maybe not every other deck but 100 percent the earth deck you want to keep them things as high as you can for as long as possible so i like to just go ahead and just mirror force the injection for lily because that's a lot of damage that i don't want to take and then I'll have to have Injection Fairy Lily still on the field the next turn to deal with it again. He hits me with a knock or a level two or something, and that's 34 coming back in again. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. So we're going to go ahead and just get rid of it now, and then be done with the whole process. As my opponent plays Swords Feeling Light, which is an interesting card to put in against me. I think it's not bad, honestly, but it's it's very interesting to see it there. As Swords is going to be at one, the Wangu is going to be spammed on the field in attack position, smacking into this Reaper. I go ahead and set the premature burial. Um, 
for reasons unknown. Why did I put that premature bear down? Maybe just a bluff. Maybe I was maybe I was just vibing. Maybe I just knew that they was hanging on to this delinquent duo and I just didn't want to get duoed. Or maybe I just want to have some type of bluff on the field to maybe prevent them from attacking or something like that. Still going to attack him with his King Tiger. I let it ride. Get my Sinister Serpent back. No big deal. Maybe making their duo a little bit They've been hanging on to this duo for quite some time. Uh, as I'm waiting on Swords to expire, as I continue to just set cards, I then uh, pass it on over. Swords expires. They hit into the Sinister Serpent. Sinister Serpent adds back to hand. Still no, still link with duo down. I bring out Kaiku and just take the challenge and just go Kaiku headlong into King Tiger Wangu as they think about it. Just a little bluff. I don't hate that. Just a little bluff. Just a little bluff thing. Like there's nothing you can do to stop this attack. But through four back row, that's very rare. I like the I like the little I like that little locked on. Locked on with a little a little gamesmanship as I banish two earth monsters. They go ahead and hit the dust tornado, snipe the Sakuritsu armor, which is pretty cool. And then bash into the Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer, doing the Goblin Attack Force things. I bring out the Shining Angel again. Shining Angel cleans up the Goblin Attack Force. Exile Force is going to pop the Shining Angel. And they still didn't play that duo. So now I have the ability to go for the Kaiku again. Kaiku gets in for 1800. Kaiku's actually not bad against the Earth deck. You can't gigantize me as I'm going to be for a breaker. But now they man up with this breaker. I think they pretty much know that this card was just dead on arrival. I probably should have just played it, honestly. Because it's, it's been sitting there for too long, so they knew it was a bluff. They just ran over this Breaker to Magic Warrior and then popped my set Premature Burial, which would have been great if I'd had it. But I go for the Assure Priest. Assure Priest cleans up Breaker the Magical Warrior, bounces the Assure Priest back to the hand. Tribe is in hand now, and now I have a full, I've fallen into the trap that shoot. I was doing, I think that's what it was. I think that whole time I was trying to play around the, the, possibility of a trap that shoot that's why i was putting all the cards on the field and just playing like trying to trying to get all my guys down but eventually i got logged up with all the monsters that i have and then i fell into the trap that shoot so they're able to send back the sinister servant and i'm like i'm like cool give it a little shuffle bring out the tomato spirit reaper and miss tomato reach in Punching for punching for 1700 and now they got a really nice duo, which wasn't really that nice. You waited so long and now you're kind of in this very, very weird spot. You have no cards yourself. I just say to hell with it because I know this card is super dead and I just smack on it with the tomato and then I get new Doria and then I can punch on in for a little bit more damage just to get them below, just to get them below that 2000. So you can't injection on me no more. You just got to kind of got to kind of take it and then I could just come on down with this breaker. Breaker's going to pop and then I get the dub. OK, so I kind of think I did some good plays there. I think I kind of played poorly as well. And I think my adversary kind of was a little too hesitant a little bit. Granted, in the right spots, it worked out. Duel for one is not the worst thing sometimes you know but it is what it is so i got the dub on locked on and i go on to a duel that goes by the name of kofi 35 kofi 35 kofi 35 just easily cleans me up season's greeting throwing paper wrapping paper on my rock and takes me on out of there and they're playing the monarch strategy oh my goodness i love me some monarchs man i love the monarchs as they go ahead and go first set spy pass i don't really have an answer to a set so i just slam the tomato to try to clap clap in just see what i'm working with I do that probably too much just to see what I'm working with. Maybe I could have set that thing, but I really want to see what I'm working with. And I see the GK spy is up. So I'm like thinking maybe this chaos turbo, I hit this trap dust shoe and I'm like, it is not chaos turbo. I am in a predicament. This deck is actually quite good against my deck. A lot of my guys are going face up. A lot of my guys have weak attacks and it is not, not the best matchup for me to have anything with goats and meta is going to be a difficult time. As they go ahead and tribute up the tomato, hit me with the Zaborg. Zaborg's gonna pop me for a 500, and then they make the meta to Ryu Senshi play. You go meta to Ryu Senshi, I'm putting both of these bad boys in attack position and I'm sending it. Okay, but they like to just play it passive, just take me for 2000. I draw a very, very nice, timely exchange right there, right when I need it. I think this is exchange, a good exchange because I'm able to exchange, send over the Shining Angel, and I'm able to take a card from their hand that is really good right now that I could actually play and have great effects immediately. I play the Premature Burial, get back my Zaborg, and then I'm able to smash on in to this Ryu Senji, who's looking kind of silly now. I think that that's the Testy boy was probably a little bit better, but I did have this mirror for so it probably was the correct play. Uh, Snatch Deal is going to take over the Zaborg, the Thunder Monarch, runs into Spirit Reaper, pass it on over. I have the Assure Priest. I figured that that might be my Shining Angel that's down on the field. Maybe they're trying to set it up for some discard or some Monarch tribute fodder. I bring out the Assure Priest. Assure Priest is going to clap on into the Shining Angel, and then I'll just chill there. I won't, I won't 
attack with it because hopefully maybe he might try to continue to launch attacks into the shining angel i can play the mirror force and revive it now my opponent draws into the royal decree sets it up pass elects not to attack which is probably the correct thing to do you got that royal decree why why take the chance i shift everything to defense position pass it over i get delinquent duoed lose my guys pass it over i draw the stupidest this is when exchange is very stupid right here when you got nothing to exchange it's like what are we doing as they got soul exchange so we got exchange versus exchange i just realized that we got soul control we're both just giving and taking the gifts of christmas you know what I'm saying? all around the rated lab just bringing peace on earth it's all you can ask for i played exchange now to just go ahead and send over the missed tomato take the tribe infecting virus and i'm just going to pass so now i have an out to this freaking zaborg the thunder monarch and then i'm going to pass okay and now i have the mst and this is where i just fall apart i don't know why i do all this i don't know what i'm doing as i go ahead and swing the missed tomato or excuse me swing the shining angel into attack position swing into the missed tomato get out new doria and i'll set one so they kept setting these damn recruiters which i think is not cool but i think i had plays like i like i don't know why i'm being so like cavalier with this damn mst i'm trying to be too cute like i'm trying to see if he's going to attack or what am i going to do because i can easily just mst take over this snatch deal and i'm just like crushing like i don't know what i'm doing but i'll just i, I started getting too cute man i do that on the ladder sometimes I just start getting too cute and just start vibing too hard and then i go to doria and i pop the one of the gk spies so now i get this creature swap and i'm like okay that set mon what could it be i look in the gy i'm thinking what could that be what could that be i want it on my i want to have it i think he's magician of faith for some reason in my head i'm like that's magician of faith and i want to see if that's what it is so i go mst i take over the uh i take over my guy again and then i go battle in and then i creature swap now <laughs> Dude, this is such a bad play. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm showing this. But you know what I'm saying? We don't you show the good, you show the bad, you show it all. This is such a terrible. Do not do this. This was a terrible. This was a terrible move. Like this was bad because I was just convinced that this was Magician of Faith for some reason, and it's clearly not. I got absolutely bamboozled, and then they, of course, I get immediately punished with the Soul X, and I get and I lose the, the tribe too. I deserve. I deserve all of this. I deserve all of this. This is just poor, poor, poor duelsmanship, you know, all around. I deserve everything that's happening to me right now. As the Borg is down, they get the Sangin, and it's just exile force. This is so bad. I can't believe I did that. And then they got uh, 24 coming in, and then we're going to go ahead and get the Breaker. Breaker's going to be able to break the Mirror Force, the, the Royal Decree. So now my Mirror Force is back if they were to attack again mirror force and i'm i can i can still play but guess what the android psycho shocker is down on the field now and it's like i deserve all of this like this is all my fault i didn't have to do what i did and i did it anyway and it's still gonna be a vibe though so we take a bunch of damage and then i just set the missing tomato and then they just got the exile force that i know about and they just kill my guy and just kill me so i'm like okay i gotta i gotta I got I gotta wake up, dude. I gotta wake up. This was this was just a that was just poor. That was just poor. That was some of the poorest stuff I've done in a long time. But you know what? It is what it is. You gotta be cute sometimes on the ladder. You gotta try different things. You gotta try to try to make it work. And if, it, if that had worked, I'd have been chilling. But I think they just played me. I think they kind of peaked their graveyard. I think they kind of really had me thinking that Elf Magician of Faith, and I just I just wanted to have it. Didn't need it. Didn't need it. I just could have I could have done so many different things that I just didn't do. But it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. As I go ahead and uh I go ahead and go first this time, I hit the graceful, I kick out the mind crush, kick out the book of moon. I brought the book of moons in because obviously monarchs have low defense and I can clean up with my recruiters. Uh they go and soul X the shining angel, bring out the psycho shocker again, and then I'm gonna go ahead and Suk knock this guy. No big deal. Get him up out of here. Sukiyomi's gonna reach in for 1100, right on. And then we're gonna get Mobius. So he's got the he's got the tomatoes on me too. We got this tomato thing. But I notice when you play against recruiters, I think my tomatoes can go longer than their tomatoes. So I'd rather just get, they don't they don't play that many normal summon monsters. But I'd rather just take the tomato challenge. We're just gonna run them all the way down, run all the tomatoes down, and then I'll end with something that can kill his. You know, to kill whatever he brings out. He brings out Sangin. I got a guy that can kill Sangin. He's got, if he goes for nothing, I can attack direct. So we got the uh, Nudori is going to be able to come down, take out Sangin. He gets a search, no big deal. And we're chilling. Search for Exile Forest, and I am absolutely fine with that. Poma gets Breaker, Breaker, Spam, and Slam. I go ahead and Book of Moon the Breaker. And now we're going to go ahead and hit the Spirit Reaper on the field. So Nudoria smacks in with 12 kick on in with 300 300 gets a shuffle i am going to rip none other than the royal decree so whenever you see like this happen 
whenever you're taking a car from their hand and it's Royal Decree, you can 1 billion percent be sure that there's a Royal Decree on the field already. I knew that and still I put the ring down. Like, what am I doing? I probably could have kept that ring in my hand. It's really not going to, until I have an answer for the, the Royal Decree. As they go ahead and bring out Exile Force, Exile Force is going to hit and then pop the Reaper, do a damage to get Reaper off the field, try to preserve their hand. I don't hate it. And then I just got the BLS here. BLS is going to spam and slam. And then I'm going to be able to attack with everyone and then ring for game. All right. So cool. I kind of got, I kind of got fortunate there, but you know, it is what it is. It is. Well, I'm still thinking about that game one. It was played so badly. So now we get into game through and now you see one of the bigger weaknesses of exchange and why this car is kind of unplayable in this format is because you know, obviously this is a chaos format. It's a chaos sorcerer BLS format. And if you have exchange and you have chaos, you don't want to give them freaking chaos. So you have to, freaking get your chaos live and on the field soon and if you can't do that then you're going to be in a bad spot you know you're, you're gonna have so many dead cards in your hand and uh, so i'm trying to think about this the fact what i want to do my goal in this match or in this game is to try to get chaos live as soon as i possibly can and then get this damn chaos sorcerer down and then play exchange immediately that's what i'm going for uh, so i have a dark monster on the field i go ahead and summon the spirit reaper hit the gnomon across out Good thing I hit Spy, which is a great hit. And then I reach on in with 300. 300, I am going to take the Exile Force, which is great. So now I got a little piece of pressure. I got a Dark Monster. I'm chilling. All I need to do is just get this Assure Priest on the field. And now they're going to go ahead and use the Tribe. They set up their Graveyard, Light and Dark, and then they're going to get rid of Spirit Reaper, punch me for 300. So what I should have done. So I think about this for a minute. And I summon the Assure Priest and attack into the damn Tribe Effecting Fires, which is cool. So I'm like, now I got my Dark Monster, I got my Light Monster. All I need is just get this Assure Priest into the graveyard. So now they're going to bring out the Mist Tomato, but I'm like, man, I don't want to set it. And then something happens and I'm in a I'm in a hurt. Like if he knocks this thing or something, who knows if he keeps knocking. If he knocks this thing, I'm going to be in a bad spot. So I'm going to keep just running the Assure Priest down. Eventually, I'll find a way to finesse this thing into the graveyard. Maybe I can crash it into something. But right now, I'm just like, just running all these cars down, trying not to get monarched, and we're gonna do it absolutely that way. But you guys can already see the finish line of what is about to happen to me as they draw this premature burial. Premature burial, bring back one of the recruiters or Sangin that I just killed, and then a tribute up for Grand Mark, pop my set, special summon Black Lesser Soldier, and that is the precise amount of damage. So I think I threw that one too. I threw game one, and I think I threw game three, because had I just set the Assure Priest here, he attacks into it, I got Light and Dark, I bring out Chaos Sorcerer, I exchange, I take BLS, and we we're playing a different game but you know what it is what it is just showing like hey you know what i'm saying sometimes sometimes you gotta no matter what the deck is you still have to play a certain to a certain level if you expect to win in this format and i was not playing at that level even on christmas no big deal no big deal no big deal all right so the last one i want to show for the Christmas special, the Christmas special, the Goatmas special. Merry Goatmas to you all and to all a uh, goat night. As we're going to continue on, I have, uh, let's see, let's see, we're playing these duels and that goes my name of Kaikud. Kaikud, Kaikud's playing the Chaos Turbo strategy. I'm going first again, which is great. So obviously I'm gonna go ahead and try to uh, set, set, oh, I didn't play the exchange, which is very interesting which is very, and I think this was a very exchangeable type hand. I didn't play it, which is very, very interesting, but I have the trap to shoot. Okay, so maybe that was what I was thinking. I wanna get the trap to shoot down first, see what they got, check their wares, and then if they got something worth exchanging, then I can come back in and play the exchange later. I think maybe that's what I was, what I was thinking. So they go ahead and upstart here. Upstart, they grab the ring. They set, they set to pass it on over to me. Okay, I got the Mystic Tomato. I summon the Shining Angel. Smash on into the Dequachi to Battle Chanted Locomotive. They don't let it roll. They kill the Shining Angel, and I shift the Sang into defense position. So I'm still kind of, and now I play the exchange. Okay, so I do play the exchange in main phase two. Uh, I give them the Nudoria and I will take over the Black Luster Soldier. All right, so let me go ahead and get that real quick. That's one, that's a great part about exchange. If you take their Black Luster Soldier, they don't, that's one less thing you gotta worry about. So that's great. As they go ahead and use the effect of Thunder Dragon, add two. Thunder Dragon, add two, hit me with a card destruction. BLS is gone, I'm kind of fine with it, no big deal. I draw into Mind Crush, Mind Crush and Premature Barrel. They flip to Koichi, add another one, Upstart, add another one, Sangin's on the beats. Sangin smack into Sangin. I get Serpent back and then the Koichi smack on into my hitbox. I'll take the 14, no big deal. Then they got the double winger set and I'm like, cool, cool. I go on Premature Burial here and they let it roll. They let the Premature Burial roll. 
I would probably, and they're going to wing blast here. Wing blast target the shining angel, put shining angel back on top of the deck. Was that right? Uh, is, or is it wing blast the premature burial? Maybe they just didn't want chaos as a follow-up. Perhaps could be what their thought process is, but I'm probably just going to just make me pay another 800 if anything. And, uh, cause I still get a set anyway. So maybe just wing blast in the premature burial perhaps. And then you're going to set to pass it back on over. I draw the shiny angel again and just do the same play that I was doing before, but this time it's 800 off and they still mirror force it all the same. So the wing blast again, wing blast is going to send back my other set. And then they're going to smash on in with Sangin, Dekoichi and night ass. So night ass, I'm, I'm in a compromised position here as they're got all these little dudes just beat me down. I set the try or set the serpent, set the torrential pass back on over to them. Hopefully they just say to hell with it and summon. But instead of saying to hell with it and summon, they kind of turtle up a little bit. They, they get, they show some fear. I would have just kept attacking. Like, what are we doing? I would have just kept pounding the drum and just trying to put some kind of clock out right there, but they attack with these two. So they do 200 damage instead of 1600 damage. Give me just a little bit more time which I don't agree with that at all. So I see that I have the exchange. I didn't set the exchange. I just kept it in hand as they got sent a serpent and they're going to do another 200. So they could have did another 1600. I don't like that at all. So now I got sent a serpent again and I think about it. I just continue to set. I'm like, you're not going to, if you're not going to, if you're not going to man up on me, I'm just going to continue to, uh, to vibe, man. And they get the no man across a magician face. And I think, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and blow up with torrential tribute. I probably could have just summoned and TT right there, but I was just afraid of a solemn for some reason or whatever, but I think it worked out. Maybe that's, I, I recognize that they're being very passive for whatever reason. They could have just been much more aggressive with those Tequaches and had a better showing. But I knew I had this mind crush, so I could have hit this knock. But I decided to hit this Golem Sentry because that's actually quite strong right now against me. I get the Sentry Serving back. No trap does shoot. Thankfully, as Graceful Charity is going to go off, I kick out the uh, Exchange and the Sentry Serpent. I s activate the Pot of Greed on Christmas. You know what I'm saying? This is a Christmas pot. Looking good. As Pot of Greed is added, now I got 17 coming down. I got his mirror force as defense so i'm kind of chilling set the mirror force pass on over they got call of the haunted they're bringing back the golem golem sentry is interesting instead of this i don't know i don't know about golem sentry there maybe that's correct he knows i got a sure reason it's got 1800 defense so that's probably what they're going for as they go ahead and punch me for 18 i will take it because i have like several answers for it in the form of nobleman and the like and i can even exchange for their nobleman since i know they have nobleman in their hand i get the sentry serpent back I go ahead and bring out the Assure Priest again, knock the Golem Sentry, smack on in with 17, and then I'm gonna set the exchange, pass it on over to them. They have Delinquent Duo, they rip the duo here, which is which is pretty cool. I kick out the Serpent, kick out the DD Warrior Lady, pass it back on over to me, I get the Serpent back, and then I'm gonna keep pounding the drum with the Assure Priest. He finally uses the Soccer Red armor. I probably could have even heavy, but I'm not gonna do that. Why would I do such a thing? And they got the Night Ass. Night Ass is now set up on the field. And now I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, this, this play will also haunt my dreams as well. Cause I, I think I, I thought I was playing pretty good. I thought my opponent had some misplays in there. So I'm like, okay, I'm looking in their graveyard. I'm like, I got this BLS, which is live and in full effect. As I just play the heavy storm, which is just like, uh, I see, which it, it actually, it actually was a correct play. Cause I was, I was thinking about this torrential tribute. Like I had a lot going on my lot, a lot, lot of thought in my mind. It took me like quite a bit to make this play, but I knew that they had, I, they could have, this torrential was, you know, was was in my mind, but I wanted to use this exchange, but I didn't want to give up the BLS. You see what I'm saying? I'm caught in this like weird little weird little triangle of like I want I want the BLS, but I also want this knock, but I also want this heavy storm, and I also don't want this torrential tribute. So I say to hell with it. I go for the dub, and I just play the heavy storm, blow up my field, and it was a torrential tribute, which is great. I go one light, one dark, and this is the next thought process that I have because I have this BLS, and I look in the graveyard, and I'm like, okay. They have one Dekoichi in here. Some of these decks play two, some play three. They have no spies in here. Some decks play three, most decks play three. They have one Faith in here. Most decks play two. I have the Sangin in here. So cards I'm missing are Sukiyomi, another Night Ass, and this guy is on Golem Sentry as well. So I'm thinking, I'm just running numbers in my head. And I'm like, okay, I can win right now. I have a lot of cards 
this duelist has not played that many good cards yet. I have a lot of cards that can absolutely kill me the very next turn. Like there are a ton of cards that they still have access to with 16 cards left in deck. And they have a few cards that if I just send this attack in there, I could just win right now. So that, these are my thoughts that I'm going that are just running through my brain. And I'm like, if it's Night Ass, I'm feeling terrible. If it's GK Spy, it's not the end of the world. If it's Magician of Faith, I win. If it's Koichi, I win. If it's Tsukiyomi, I'm I'm boned because I know they got this freaking Nomen Cross out of my hand. So maybe looking back on it, hindsight being what it is, I probably should go for a banishment. But you know what? This is JDZ and I play Ghost, so I'm swinging. And it was a Night Ass, so I got promptly smoked by the Night Ass. And it was GK Spy that was next. So maybe maybe not swinging there was correct. And uh, but still, if he if he draws Snatch Deal the next turn, or if he draws, you know, anything else, I'm still I'm still kind of boned. But so it's going to be uh, it's going to be what it is. So I got Breaker. And like all this stuff, like when, when people do this in the chat, like too greedy, like I don't, I don't need, no one needs that. Not on Christmas, not on any time, you know, keep that, keep your internal thoughts to yourself on the go format dueling ladder. I mean, I don't, especially if you don't know the person that you're, that you're playing against. Just, just keep it to yourself, man. Nobody wants that. That's for me to you on Christmas, but we got breaker breaker is going to smack into the GK spy. Tsukiyomi is going to clean up the breaker and I'm already just pissed off as uh, it's going to be, you know what I'm saying? A, a winning, a winning situation looks like it's just going to a losing situation just based on like a small few things like the way the game goes like i could have done things different and i just didn't as shining angel is going to try to stifle the bleeding a little bit as i'm able to clean up one and let's see what they do here they go ahead and just set set i go ahead and just attack into the probably the Tsukiyomi. i said another mon they make the decision to put it back down and then chaos sorcerer comes down and i just absolutely lose on the spot so i'm tilting like crazy now because i'm like okay that just didn't make any sense like why did that go that way like why 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 did it have to be like that like why couldn't that just be the koichi or magician of faith or literally anything else i mean it's not like they held this night assailant to a certain put to a certain point to put it down at that moment just for that reason it was just what they had and they put it down it could have been since the serpent it could have been the koichi it could have been the magician of faith it could have been anything else and i'm absolutely walking out of there with a dove but guess what it was night assailant and he already had one night assailant too so that kind of really really tilts me but it is what it is so i go ahead and bring out i go ahead and set set the hand okay onto the field and i exchange give up the Tsukiyomi. i take probably that black lesser soldier again all right we're taking we're taking the bls here and it's another weird part about exchange is like you don't want your your good cards to be taken obviously so you're going to hide them onto the field so now i got all these weird cards out of position on the field which kind of sucks but it is what it is it is what it is on christmas it don't matter it don't matter as we got the thunder dragon still in hand we got the ring of destruction and he has my sukiyomi i go ahead and play the pro set potter greed and i will pass it on over to my opponent my opponent is going to re just I mean, and that's another thing too. You don't have to. Rev you don't have to do all that with Thunder Dragon. Just discard it. Boom. Throw it in the graveyard. Add your Thunder Dragon. You don't have to do all the whole, all the reveal and declare. We don't, we don't need any of that. Just go ahead and just, just throw that thing out. As they go ahead and delinquent duo take their BLS again. I got the Spirit Reaper. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the Nomen across out, and I'm see if I can start forcing some of these Wing Blasts to get to get activated here. As I go ahead and reach on in with 300, 300, and it connects. And I'm just going to get a rip as they hit the ring of destruction. Never mind, I won't. I hit the I hit the 300 doesn't connect, but the 1400 does. And let's see if we wing blast this. We don't. We'll take the 1400. Jinzo is in hand. Jinzo in this matchup is also strange. Like I'm not playing that many traps, but it is what it is. As they go ahead and wing blast, kick the Kaiku back to the top of the deck. 1400 is going to bear down and connect. They got Magician of Faith. I got Kaiku back. I'm going to go ahead and come on in with this 1400. They get back to the Liquid Duo. Who cares? And I'm going to smack on in with 1800 as your clock is running down. Kaiku doing the thing. No man across out in hand. I got the set Tsukiyomi. I try to get in with the Shining Angel. Again, a little bit of greed play. I probably should have ran some numbers and assessed that that was my, in fact, my own Tsukiyomi, but I didn't. As uh, Tsukiyomi will wall out this, uh, will wall out the Shining Angel. And then I'll go ahead and clean up the Tsukiyomi with my own, which, I, which is, again, is another, which is another misplay but that was my fault i probably should not have killed my own card i probably should have just let it come back to my hand since after he said that you know what we're both just playing poorly i'm playing poorly he's playing poorly it is what it is and it's kind of late and it's the ladder the ladder you guys don't understand the ladder was just so bad the last couple of days with so much lag it was just such a poor dueling experience i got to the dub no big 
deal. All right, all right, all right. We're going on into a game three scenario, game three situation as I got Serpent or Reaper, Tomato, Tomato, Kaiku, and Knock. They got some turbo stuff and they're chilling. I got the Mr. Tomato, Tomatoes on the approach. I smack in with 14. I said, shoot a wing blast my shoot no big deal they got the jinzo again take that damn jinzo out of your deck dude that thing shouldn't be there like what what traps am i showing that are so problematic like i'm not showing if you're playing jinzo against me you should you should probably see like nine traps i'm not playing that many traps granted i do have i do have some traps but i'm not playing so many traps to the point where jinzo is needed like jinzo is a liability at this point as 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 indicated by what is happening right now i'm playing a very low to the ground aggressive deck you need normal you need good good summonable options and jinzo ain't that because i'm not playing that many traps as i go ahead and get the sangan and then i'm going to smack on in with 1000 and then I will also smack on in with 300 and then I'll get a rip. Watch me rip this Jinzo. No chance. No, it's going to be Magician of Faith. I'll take over the Magician of Faith as they draw to another Magician of Faith. Bring out Serpent TT. Love that. Love to see that as I get my own Sinister Serpent back. So now I got Trap Death Shoot. So now I don't know what I'm thinking. Oh my goodness. This is bad for me too. Why am I not sitting this Kaiku to go straight in there? That makes no sense. Kaiku should be all up in there, dude. Kaiku should be in there. I'm bugging. Maybe, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I just want to, uh, I want to get this trap death shoot to go. Perhaps. I don't know. I'm bugging. I am absolutely bugging. And, uh, I'm going with the spirit reaper. I don't know why. Maybe I just, I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling myself, dude. I'm just feeling, I'm just vibing as I go ahead and hit the trap death shoot. When they get to send the serpent back trap death shoot, I'm going to actually send back the magician of faith. And now I know the hand. Okay. Now I know this not Kaiku is about to go insane as i go ahead and kick out the uh kick out the serpent and nudori okay so i go and hit knock on the serp and then i go ahead and hit in with spirit reaper spirit reaper to take over the thunder dragon and Alkaiku can just go ahead and pillage uh pillage the gy I'll take out the dark. I'll take out one of the lights, pass it on over. My opponent says the golem sentry. Golem sentry is down. And I think about it for a brief moment here as I go ahead and try to play the exchange because I know th what this whole operation is that they got going on here. I play the exchange now. They chain ring to Kaiko the Ghost Destroyer, which is even, gr even better because I know I have my own ring and I can easily just, you know, I can, and they, I just give them the breaker and then I could just easily just use the spirit of reaper spirit of christmas present and past and then i'll just ring that guy for 800 and i will get the dub i still don't even like that last sequence but that's what i elected to go with but whoo man well wow 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 that was that was it that was gg so that was a gg that was the power of exchange that was the spirit of christmas you know what i'm saying i just want to showcase that for the for the for the for this Christmas spirit, is this the best deck in Go format? Absolutely not. This deck is very frustrating. It's kind of hard to play, but I do think that the card exchange has some merits, and I think that it can be played in Go format. You just have to get creative and figure out uh, interesting ways to do that, and it can put your opponent in weird compromise positions. But I just wanted to showcase this, and I just want to take some time to reach out to all of you and just say from the bottom of my heart again, Merry Goatmas to you all. I hope you have a great season's greeting. Spend some time with your family, eat some good food and just have a good time and try to recalibrate and come back strong on this goat miss. I hope you all have a great day and a great season and I'll see you all again next year. We're coming back strong. All right, until next time, I'm JDZ. I play goats. Shout out to all the real ones. Salute to the OGs. Peace.